welcome to the video on topic pharmaceutical product development and life cycle in this video we are going to see how the pharmaceutical products are developed whether it is generic product or innovator product and what is the life cycle of the pharmaceutical product in this video mainly generic product will be discussed there is not much change in the product development for the innovator product and the generic product the only difference is the preclinical and clinical studies are performed in the innovator product or the ndas and bioequivalent studies are performed for the generic formulations let's start with the video the product life cycle so the development way or product life cycle differs as per the product requirements product criticality risk involved different applicants like organizations the product market and the specific business goals so first is the product identification idea generation or availability of the new chemical entity based on that the product identification starts after product identification the product comes into the research and development phase so once the nc is there for nda product or once the product is identified for the filing or marketing for the generic product that product comes into the research and development phase then the product is developed and it goes to the hotel be uh, pilot be study if required then scale up and technology transfer process optimization and validation exhibit batches the hotel be and regulatory filing after that comes the regulatory query response then regulatory approval after that commercial manufacturing and marketing if there is any changes required for the product then it goes into the post approval changes spec changes then stability and other requirements as per the spec changes also to have the cost competition uh, advantage the product can be given back to the r&d for uh, cost cutting purpose or for improvement purpose if any or uh, for improving the uh, patient compliance for the particular formulation so once again the product comes into r&d once again that phase begins and it goes to commercial marketing so this is the general way of uh, product life cycle i am trying to enlist all the stages but these stages depends on the product product criticality and the marketing requirements so now we will see the steps in much details so first is product identification and feasibility of the manufacturing if manufacturing feasibility is not possible in the organization then these products can be given to the cmos and contract development laboratories if the feasibility is there then it comes to the forecasting for cost and market value then a risk identification and market identification then risk and timelines for intellectual property related decisions so if the product is patented by the innovator api is patented so as per the intellectual property rights and the patents or copyrights or trademarks these uh, risk uh, is evaluated and the timelines are identified so after this the product comes into the development stage in the r&d and then the product development activity starts literature search for formulation analytical and patents so this is the preliminary stage once we have got the product in the r&d then literature search will start 
then as per the requirement different codes will be generated for the product like uh, product code for finished product code for in process materials or code for a specific market then api rm codes will be generated based on to the requirement or sometimes these codes are generated after the finalization of composition then the licensing activity will start uh, license will be required like test license manufacturing license import license for rld and api if the api is imported based on this license activity then the prototype formulation batches can be started so the activities can go parallel like literature search licensing sourcing of api excipients and packaging materials based on to the literature sourcing for the analytical requirements like samples of api samples of impurity uh, columns reagents uh, required as per the literature then supplier source vendor evaluation so this activity will take time uh, different vendors are required to be contacted their documents are required to be reviewed and checked then their specifications are required to be reviewed then tentative specification for rm packaging materials apis can be made for the licensing activity and based on that the licensing activity will start then a reference product search will be there if the product is generic and it will be sourced from the country for which the product will be filed so for example if the product is for us market then you will need us rld europe rld ich region rld or brazil rld depending on your market after that api rm pm evaluation will happen reference product characterization and evaluation will happen and based on that you can uh, procure the change part and toolings for the prototype product development then rld packaging characterization will be there for uh, having the information regarding packaging requirements then pharma uh, pharmacopoeial monograph study if the product or api is uh, pharmacopoeial and compliance evaluation so how the material are there complying or not if the monographs are there if monograph is not available then in house methods are required to be made then prototype batches manufacturing for composition and manufacturing process selection once you receive all the materials you receive the rld then you prepare the qtpp for prototype development and based on that the prototype formulation batches are taken generally batches with different particle size of api different composition uh, different uh, manufacturing processes are taken and loaded on to the stability then prototype product stability of different compositions as i have mentioned manufacturing process api sources and in different packs then drug excipient compatibility to come up with the compatible excipients then these prototype uh, formulas composition for prototype products are given for the analytical method development dissolution mapping is done uh, and multimedia dissolution studies are performed to have understanding about the dissolution behavior of the product then after having stability of around at least 3 months the pilot b batches are manufactured and pilot b study is performed as per the requirement and as per the risk so generally if the molecules are uh, bcs class 2 or bcs class 4 that time the pilot b studies are must if the api is showing ph dependent solubility if polymorphism problems are there then pilot b batches are required if the product is highly soluble then you can go for biowaver also then after that finalization of the prototype composition and process analytical method verification will be there then analytical method validation will be there and the method will be transferred to the manufacturing site for api raw materials and the finished product 
then specifications are made procurement of api rm pm tooling and change parts are done for the scale up and exhibit batches for some of the uh, time uh, these eb batches are also called as validation batches or process qualification batches or process validation batches so these are the terminologies uh, used then documentation is done for technology transfer training method is uh, developed and transferred then procurement of reference product is done for b studies that is pivotal b study for generic product then finalization for the batch size and equipment is done so generally batch size finalization equipment finalization is done along with the procurement of api and rm so number of batches also required to be finalized before going to scale up uh, the process is required to be uh, studied at r&d for parameter finalization process optimization batches are required to be taken at r&d and sometimes pre scale up batches are also taken uh, to understand the product and to understand the process criticality then process optimization and qualification can be done at plant then come to the pivotal batches manufacturing exhibit batches manufacturing and pivotal bioequivalence study then bioever reports are generated and made and studies are required if the product is critical then these eb batches are loaded in onto the stability and after loading of the stability the bioequivalence study will go in parallel along with the stability studies of exhibit batches during this time uh, report preparation will be there documentation will be there and after 6 month of the stability studies and successful pivotal b the regulatory filing will be done after that depending on to the uh, regulatory body the query query will come they, the regulatory body will ask about the queries and then query response will be done after completion of all this activity the product will get approved by the regulatory body so then once the product is approved by the regulatory body then the commercial launch activity will start so if required uh, the commercial scale up batches are taken this is why because in the exhibit batches around 1 lakh or 1 lakh 50000 uh, uh, unit batches is taken at that uh, eb scale batch size and if uh, the commercial batch size is higher then commercial batch size scale up is also taken then commercial validation batches are taken commercial batches are manufactured tested and sent to the market so if there is any requirement depending on to the product post approval activities are performed and spec changes are done then spec changes may involve the change in composition change in process or site transfer or equipment change or manufacturing site change so all this activity will happen if is if anything is required then stability studies are done for the spec uh, changes ivivc is done to check whether the product is compliant to the results of pivotal b batches then specifications will be revised and the product will be commercialized so this is the uh, product life cycle now once again if the uh, product is already uh, going in the commercial market and if some changes are required to be done like changes to the excipient changes to the api source or change in the api particle size or change in the capsule size that time that product will also come again into the research phase and research work will be done once again the uh, scale up and exhibit batches will be taken or as per the uh, changes the cb0 cb30 or post approval uh, assessment will be done that will go into the pass that is uh, first we have to inform to the authority get approval for the changes and then the product can be manufactured so this is the life cycle of the pharmaceutical product i have tried to enlist all the stages but still if anything is remaining you can uh, add from your own side 
and also you can comment so that it will be helpful for the people who are watching the videos the product life cycle example i can uh, give you here is uh, that if the capsule size of the original uh, formulation was double zero and because of that uh, there was market complaint or there was a uh, requirement of the reducing the capsule size from double zero to let's say zero or one so that product will come into the uh, life cycle approach the product will be given to the r d r d team will evaluate the criticality and based on that the formulation will be revised so this revision will come into the uh, major change then uh, pivotal bio studies are required sometime piled bio studies are also required and once again the product will go through the scale up take transfer activity then once again it will go to regulatory filing and then it will be commercialized so depending on the product requirement product risk the product development and life cycle will happen i hope uh, i have covered the points and you will get benefited from this video so if any query is there or any suggestion is there or any uh, missing step is there you can comment thank you for watching the video and i request you to please do like share and subscribe to pharma learning in depth channel thank you